the no complaining rule, training camp, the shark and the goldfish, and his newest book is Soup, a recipe to nourish your team and culture. John and his books have been featured on CNN and NBC's Today Show, as well as being in Forbes, Fast Company, O Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times. His principles have been put to the test by numerous NFL coaches and teams, hospitals, Fortune 500, companies, schools. He has been absolutely everywhere, helping people to reach their goals and reach their dreams. John is a graduate of Cornell University and holds a master's degree in teaching from Emory University. When he's not speaking to businesses or hospitals or schools, you can find him playing tennis or lacrosse with his wife and kids. I'm impressed that his wife is playing lacrosse. Today, John is going to present a fabulous session for us called The Energy Bus, 10 Rules to Fuel Your Life, Work and Team with Positive Energy. Let's give a huge exit welcome for John Gordon. Thank you so much. I am just so excited, thrilled to be here. You know, all that stuff, that doesn't mean much. What means much to me is when I was walking around, people were coming up to me saying how the energy bus was used in your offices to keep positive and to stay positive and to keep the positive energy flowing with your teams during challenging times. So give yourself a hand for that. That means everything to me. People from all over here, right? Where are you from? Shout it out. Wow, all over, all over. Well, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. That's where I came from. But I actually grew up in Long Island, New York. In a Jewish-Italian family. A lot of food, a lot of guilt. A lot of wine, a lot of whining. My mom was a Jewish mom, and she wanted the son the doctor, the son the lawyer. My brother went to Johns Hopkins pre-med. I went to Cornell University pre-law. She was telling everyone, oh, my son the doctor, my son the lawyer. She was ecstatic. My brother came out an actor. I came out a bartender. <laughs> I remember I called her up. I said, Mom, are you disappointed? She said, no, I just want you to be happy. She was definitely disappointed. <laughs> but I know that she'd be proud I'm here with you today. So now I live in the Jacksonville area and I get to work with so many amazing organizations, sports teams, and just great folks like you. And out of that work, I wrote a book called The Energy Bus. Who here has read The Energy Bus? Woo! I'm so excited about that. Usually it's two people in the audience, so that's great. Well, for those who haven't read it, it's about a guy named George who's miserable and negative. His team at work is in disarray. He has problems at home and he wakes up Monday morning to this flat tire. And to be very honest, George was based on me and my own personal struggles in my own life. And so he wakes up Monday morning to this flat tire and he's just fed up with life. He walks inside, asks his wife to take him to work, and she won't. That was based on personal experience. <laughs> so now he has to take the bus to work, and he gets on the bus and he meets Joy, the bus driver, and she calls him Sugar. She has a big old smile, and she and a cast of characters teach George the 10 rules for the ride of his life that not only help him become a more positive leader, but a better father, a better husband, and it's about how to get his team on the bus and moving in the right direction with a shared vision and focus and purpose. And I have to be very honest, I was very surprised what happened when I wrote that book. I prayed for it to be a bestseller, and it came out, and guess what? It was a bestseller. In Korea! I learned you have to be specific with your prayers. I remember getting the call from my publisher, congratulations, John, you're officially cemented as the David Hasselhoff of Korea. And then just recently this summer, for the first time after four years of being at it, became a Wall Street Journal bestseller. Four years later, and I was thinking, why are people resonating with this book now? And, and I realized because George, the main character, represents the challenges that we all face. You know, can we take the lessons we learn on the bus and bring them to the work that we do? Can we overcome all the adversity, the challenges, and the obstacles that every leader, 
that every realtor, every team will have to overcome to define themselves and their team's success. See, I believe now more than ever we have a choice between two roads, the positive road and the negative road. And the positive road leads to success, joy, and fulfillment. The negative road leads to failure, negativity, and despair. And our bus can't be on two roads at the same time. Would you agree with that? So we have to decide what road we want to be on. Who's going to take the positive road? And once we decide to take that positive road, everything changes from there. And what I want to talk about today is taking that positive road to create what I call a culture of greatness. A culture of greatness in your offices, in your career, in your life, and also at home, in your family. Culture of greatness can be created everywhere and anywhere. What is a culture of greatness? It's where we expect great things to happen even during challenging times. We still expect great things to happen. Do you expect great things to happen now? Yeah. You wouldn't be here if you didn't, right? You expect great things to happen. It's also where you expect the best, the best of each other and yourself. You settle for nothing less than excellence because what you expect is what you get, right? I have two kids, they're 10 and 12. I know that if I set the expectations up here, they will rise up to meet those expectations. If I set them down here, they will rise up to meet those expectations. People want to be held accountable. They want to be great. Help them be great. Which brings us to the next thing about a culture of greatness. It's not just about expecting the best, but you help people be their best. You coach them. You develop them. You mentor them. You shape them. You invest in them. It's a much different mindset. I love when uh, Zig Ziglar was asked, hey Zig, what happens if we spend all this money training people and they leave? And Zig would say, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> it's a much more important mindset, right? And that's what I love about your model. I love that your model is all about relationships. It's all about bringing people on and then coaching them, developing them, and that your success depends on their success, and their success depends on your coaching and your success. But it's more than that, it's also about creating an environment in your offices, in your homes, in your communities where you can't help but be great. The minute that you walk in the door, the minute that your fellow agents walk in the door, you can't help but be great because you expect it, you demand it, and you support it. And I would argue, that culture is everything. Culture drives behavior, behavior drives habits, and habits create the future. And that's why when I speak to sports teams, which I've, I've done a lot of recently, I say you win in the locker room first, and then you win on the field. And I believe you win with the culture you create in the workplace, in your offices, and then you win out in the marketplace. So let's talk about some simple principles that, that we can all do to create this culture of greatness. The previous session was awesome. You heard so many great techniques, so many great strategies to, to build a great business. I just loved it. But it's like a map. You can have a map to go to New York, but if you don't have the gas to get you there, then your car's not going anywhere. Your plane is not flying. So today I wanna to share with you the gas. I wanna share with you the principles that I believe will fuel your ride with amazing positive energy. And that first principle I wanna share is that we must be humble and hungry. Everybody say humble. humble. Everybody say hungry. hungry. When I think of humble, I think of this leadership conference I, was, conference I was speaking at in Dallas here, not too far from here actually. And who was in the front row while I was speaking? Zig Ziglar. You know Zig Ziglar? Of course, inspirational speaker, one of my heroes. I couldn't believe it. I ran over to Zig. I said, Zig, one of the big goals of my life was, was to meet you. He said, you need to have bigger goals. <laughs> Still sharp after all these years, and, and while I'm speaking, I look over, and there is Zig, and he's taking notes. Talk about distracting. And then I realized, you know what? Anybody could have been up there, and Zig would have been taking notes. At 82 years old, Zig is a lifelong learner. 82 years old, he doesn't think he knows. He doesn't think he knows it all. Still learning, still growing, still improving still striving to get better, saying, how can I be better today than I was yesterday? How can I be better tomorrow than I am today? Zig inspired me. The day I die, I want to say in my tombstone, he was only 5'9", but he never stopped growing. I hope you join me in that mindset. It's so funny, I meet people all the time, and they say, I expect you to be taller. 
I said I know, me too. <laughs> My brother's 6'2", I don't know what happened to me. But I gotta tell you, since I've been saying this, since I've been talking about growth and never stop growing, I think I'm still growing. It was amazing. I was getting this physical exam the other day and the nurse was measuring my height and she said, okay, so you are five, nine and a half? I said, actually I'm five, nine with shoes on and I didn't have any shoes on. She'd been about five, eight and a half. She says, let me measure you again. She pulls out the measuring stick, measure me again. She said, hun, you are five, nine and a half. <laughs> it's amazing what positive energy can do. So join me in this growth mindset where, where anything is possible, anything. But it's not just be, about being humble, it's also about being hungry, hungry with a passion and a burning desire to be our best and bring out the best in others. Hungry with a desire to work harder than everyone else. Will Smith, the famous actor, was asked the secret to his success. He said, I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. What does that mean? He said, you and I get on a treadmill next to each other. He said, you're getting off first or I die. <laughs> He said, it's really that simple. He said, you may be smarter than me, you may be more talented than me, but you will not outwork me. I will not be outworked. And I think that is such an important message for today. Because many people believe in the myth of greatness. They believe that people were born that way, they were lucky, they were chosen. No, I've interviewed the top realtors in the country. I've interviewed the best of the best, and every one of them works harder than everyone else. Would you agree with that? Hard work has been, is, and always will be the key to success. And so you must ask yourself, am I willing? Am I willing to learn more today than I did yesterday? Am I willing to grow high? Am I willing to work harder than everyone else? The key is that we must be willing because God does not pick the best. God uses the most willing. And if you are willing, God will mold you, shape you, and develop you to be your best. And I would argue that to deny being your best is to deny the gift that you were meant to give others. Think about it. Because as you develop the best within you, and you start sharing those gifts, those talents with everyone else, they have the beneficiary of your gifts. But also, as you pursue excellence, you raise the standards of everyone around you your fellow colleagues, your team, your family, and your community. So are you willing? Yeah. Are you willing? Yeah. I really need to know, are you willing? Yeah. And if you are willing, then you will continue to grow and your business will be in proportion to the growth of you. Remember that. But growth isn't easy, right? Growth is really challenging. Growth is hard work. And that brings us to our second principle. We must fuel our ride with positive energy. We must fuel our ride with positive energy because along the way, we're gonna hit obstacles. We're gonna hit challenges. We're gonna hit adversity. But in the words of the great American philosopher, Rocky Balboa, <laughs> he said, it ain't how hard you get hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. We're all gonna face tests. If you faced a test in the past year, raise your hand. Who hasn't? I've faced many tests. We all have. But it's how we respond to the tests that matter. So I want to share with you a, a story about a test my family and I had to face. It was a very minor test, but it's a good analogy. We were flying from Jacksonville to Maine. First time ever going to Maine, and we were connecting in the Philadelphia airport. We arrived an hour and a half late. We landed at Terminal A, and we're leaving from Terminal F. I knew in the Philly airport, you have to connect at C-16, which is really far from A, and then once you get to C-16, you have to take a bus shuttle that takes you to F. I look at the screen, we have 10 minutes to make our connecting flight. I'm thinking there's no way we're gonna make it, but I turned to my wife and kids, I said, all right guys, let's start running. And there we were running through the airport, and I always tease my wife because she can't run. She's like, ah! <laughs> she was doing her best. You wanna do that again? No, 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 no. So we're running. And by the way, those who travel here, have you noticed more people running through airports? You do say yes. Yes, I see it all the time. Next time you see someone run by you, I encourage you to do what I do, cheer them on. It's my new thing. As they run by, I say, go, go, go. I believe in you. You can do it. This woman the other day, she was running by. You can tell she hadn't run in a while, but I was cheering her on. And as she ran by, she's like this. 
I think we should start handing out water to people. <laughs>